we stand, turn, and face the cross. <clears throat> I'm thankful that you came to worship today on this fourth Sunday of Advent, uh, uh, the Sunday by tradition where we lift up the very good gift of Mary and her faithfulness uh, in, the, in this plan of God's that unfolds in Jesus. Uh, let us uh, begin this morning with hymn 269, Once in Royal David City. If you'd like to look in your hymnal to get the music or the words will be on your screen. their apostolic greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Christ, only Son of the Father, 
Stir up your power, Lord Jesus Christ, and come with your abundant grace and might to free us from all that binds us, so that we might receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We'll light our candles now. scripture this morning. Richard, you want to come up? A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. But you, O brethren of Ephrathiah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is with labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord in his in the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be one of peace. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Sunday where we uh, hear about Mary, so we are going to... Uh, to sing this wonderful verse uh, in Mary's voice from the Holden's Evening Prayer, and then encourage you to stand up and sing with us. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth, to a woman whose name was Mary. Angel said to her, Rejoice, so highly favored, for God is with you. You shall 
shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the Chosen One of God Most High. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God, I live to My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here, and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you. Strong is your kindness evermore. How you favor the weak and lowly one, humbling the proud of heart. You have cast the mighty down from their thrones and uplifted the humble of heart. You have filled hungry with wondrous things and left the wealthy no part. Great and mighty are you, O faithful one. Strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forever My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here, and blessed me all my life through. While we're standing, let's welcome our gospel. according to St. Luke. So in those days, Mary set out with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women! And blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And then Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness, lowliest of his servants. Surely from now on, 
All generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. And he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones. And he's lifted up the lowly. And he's filled the hungry with good things. And sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors. To Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months, and then she returned to her own home. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. <clears throat> I don't know how well you guys do it, <clears throat> wrapping presents and all that. I, I'm, it's definitely not my gift. I have a love-hate relationship with wrapping paper and... Uh, you know, I, I have great expectations when I try to wrap a present and it just doesn't ever come out right. And so that's why I only wrap my wife's presents because I can't get her to wrap those on her own. <laughs> and a lot of it has to do with, you know, just choosing poor paper, being cheap and buying the cheapest thing I can find at the discount rack. So it's so thin that it rips by the time I carry it from the car to the house I'm going to or... Or in my house, we wrapped uh, with newspaper all the time, too, which, which doesn't do justice to a present, I suppose. And, and, and when I really feel bad about this is when you have that person that just wraps their presents beautifully, like, like Lois here in our congregation. My, my Aunt Mary, my mom's sister, she used to wrap presents in this real heavy foil that... Uh, uh, department store paper, I would call it, and with bows and, and, and ribbons, and it would just be a beautiful thing when you were nine or ten to get this birthday present from Aunt Mary. And, and even if it was whitey tighties, you know, that were in it, you were, you were excited about what could be underneath this box. And, and, and at nine, you know, you, you didn't want to rip the paper because it was so precious. You'd, you'd take your fingers and you'd break the tape just a little bit and then you'd and then you'd fold it nice as if you were going to use it again and you know that's what I aspire to but 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 that that's not normally what I what I reach <clears throat> and you know it's an enthusiasm that I would have at a at a well-wrapped present that you know that I think about Mary because because in real ways, you know, God is giving us this present of Jesus, and Mary is sort of the wrapping paper that, that Jesus comes in. And, and the world's already decided that, that Mary is bargain wrapping paper that you get at odd lots or big lots. You know, that's, that's how she appears to everybody, that's for sure. I mean, she's uh, poor from a poor family in, in, in a village, on the corner of the Roman Empire, along the Sea of Galilee. And she's a young woman in, in a culture where really women only had any power and voice once they got married and bore children. And if they didn't get married and bore children, then, then they were as lowly as slaves or children themselves their whole lives. And, and, and God's plan doesn't do her any favors either because it involves her getting pregnant without being married, which would make her an outcast in her village and uh, uh, a harlot in, in, in ways that people would whisper about her. No, it feels like an odd choice for God to make this Mary, to, to wrap this present Jesus in. And so, so your inclination is thinking that God found some old newspaper to wrap this thing up. But, but, but when Luke, who, who tells the story of Mary with such love, when Luke unfolds this character for us, we, <clears throat> we, we get a sense that, uh, that we've underestimated what God has done, which is normal for us, isn't it, in our faith lives. That, that, that Mary, in fact, is, is this Thick department store foil <laughs> wrapping Jesus with, with ribbons and bows. That just, I mean, just look at the traits of Mary in the scripture. She's, 
she's patient, she's humble, uh, she ponders. I love that about her. And when all these things are going on, Luke twice tells us that Mary just steps back at, at the workings of God and, and ponders, <laughs> Luke says, just takes it in, you know, rather than me or you asking a thousand questions and wanting to figure it all out, Mary's letting it unfold around her. That's just wonderful. And maybe the trait that, that I'm most attracted to, the, the, one that, the one that encourages me and challenges me in my faith, is that she's obedient. You know, not, a, not, not an easy word that we use, uh, especially for women nowadays, as we, as we see in the abuse in a patriarchal system, uh, demanding women be obedient. But Mary's obedient in her faith in a way that calls all of us, men and women. I mean, she says yes, right? <laughs> and, and, and you say, well, of course she said yes, but no. <laughs> no, every one of us has the opportunity in the midst of our faith lives to say no. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's this contract that we have with God. That's this free will. And Mary yet says yes. Even though saying no was by far the easiest answer when God comes to this young woman with this plan of, of having a child. <clears throat> because, of course, you know the story that by Mary saying yes, she, she puts herself in danger. Uh, uh, killings of, of, of pregnant women uh, by their own family members in the Middle East today and in the Middle East then were not unheard of. There could have been some crazy uncle that decided to blot out the shame that Mary was bringing them. Uh, Mary's only hope for a full life was to be married and, and, and have a husband in her culture. And, and having this child put her in danger of, of tragically ruining her life. And even if she tried to explain what the angel Gabriel told her, that this child is somehow from God, <laughs> you could hear the snickers and the sarcasm of the other village community that surrounded her as they retold that story. And Mary was obedient. She's the best sort of wrapping paper. And just so Luke makes clear that you hear that her obedience is the center of her faith, he tells a story right before Mary about Zechariah, this wise old priest who, who has a similar sort of story. God comes to Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth in their old age and says, you're going to have a baby. When Mary hears that news, she says, yes, I am a servant of your Lord. When Zechariah hears that news, he goes, what? No, whoa. I mean, Luke wants us to hear the unexpected Mary is the one whose faith we can learn from. Not the one we expect, Zechariah. Mary's faith is this beautiful gift that was able to bear this present of Jesus for the world. And Luke wants us to fall in love with her as he's fallen in love with her in this story. And as generations have been moved by her faith, she isn't bargain basement wrapping paper. She's the best sort. What Lazarus used to do when you'd stand in line and wait. Mary. You know, in the waters of baptism, each of us have received this very same gift. What we believe is that God dwells in us through baptism. That we've opened ourselves like Mary and we've said yes. And God becomes a part of us, in the center of us. And then our whole lives become wrapping paper itself to present this good gift to the world. And, and so I hope 
that you are moved by the faith of Mary like me to, to wonder what sort of wrapping paper have I become to bear the gift of Jesus. Mary is called Theotokos by the church, bearer of God, when really we are all Theotokos, bearers of God. How have we wrapped that present? What do our lives look like? I was scanning uh, one of my favorite books the other day, Tattoos of the Heart by uh, Father Gregory Boyle. Who, uh, and those of you that have been around know that this is one of my favorite ministries. He started something called Homeboy Industries in, in Los Angeles in the 80s. And, and Homeboy Industries is, is an effort by his congregation to, to put to work uh, young men and young women uh, get them out of gang culture in the dangerous neighborhood that they lived in and, and try to overcome some of the difficult circumstances they have by, by work and love and grace and worship. It's really a fascinating and fantastic ministry that's still going on, still led by Father Boyle, a cancer survivor now. And, and basically what they do is they, they create all these enterprises that they put kids to work. And one of those is a graffiti removal in L.A. And, um, and, and so McGuail is the story that, he, that I was reading. It's a story of a 23-year-old named McGuail, uh, who, like most of the men and women in Homeboy Industries, Father Boyle has known them since they were babies before, and has known their parents before them. And he said that McGuail's story, unfortunately, isn't an unusual story that he experienced physical and sexual abuse, that he, that, that, that he was mistreated and scarred and then left by his parents when he was 10, abandoned, and lived the rest of his life in the foster care system, never to see his parents again. And, and yet, Father Boyle was always moved by how joyful McGuail was in the world with, with all of this stuff that he dragged around. And, and he starts the story by saying that on one New Year's Day, early in the morning, way earlier than anyone normally should call, McGuail gives him a phone call to wish him a happy New Year with such happy joy that it hurt his ears. And he was afraid that he was going to enter the New Year with some hearing loss. And, and, he, and he greeted him and he said, thanks for your thoughtfulness, McGuail, for, for wishing me a happy New Year at six in the morning. How was your Christmas? Because he knew that McGrail lived alone in a tiny apartment. And McGrail said, oh, it was good. I had five of the other guys from the crew. You know, G-Dog, that's what they call him. You know, G-Dog, uh, guys like me. And what he meant was guys with the same story. Orphans uh, abandoned by their families. So he gathered these orphans in his room, these grown men in this small one-room apartment that he had. And he said, well, what did you do with them? He said, well, I made dinner. Dinner? Uh, that's fantastic. Wow, well, what did you make? And he goes, I made homeboy turkey. And Father Boy goes, well, I'm not sure what homeboy turkey is. And he goes, well, you, you take a gang of butter, and then you add the salt and pepper, and it mixes it all up with lemon, and, and, it, and it tastes real proper. And he goes, well, that does sound delicious. What, what, what else did you serve? And he goes, oh, gee, dog, you don't need anything else when you got homeboy turkey. That's enough. And then McGuail gets quiet. and He says, and we just sat in my kitchen table and stared at that oven. The six of us waiting for that turkey to be done. And Father Boyle writes in his book, there's no more beautiful or sacred image that he has of the body of Christ than six orphans gathered around an oven on Christmas together because of the love of one. And a few months later, he found himself alone in a car checking out a graffiti site, and he, and he, and he determined to ask McGuire, what made him full of this love like this? 
And Miguel took the question real seriously, and he, and he was silent for minutes so much so that, that Boyle thought that maybe he had forgotten <laughs> what he was thinking about. And then finally he said, you know, I've always known I've had goodness inside of me. But no one else thought I did. And it was really hard for me to keep believing I did. Until one day, I found it. And it was right here in the center of my heart, G-Dog. Right here in the center of my heart. Goodness. And when I found it there in the center, I knew for the rest of my life, that's who I am. And that's who I've been. McGuail receives God at the center of who he is, goodness, and then becomes this present that the world has already determined as the is, is newspaper wrapped over whitey tidies. But it's not, is it? It's the most beautiful foil paper we can imagine, with ribbons and bows. With the most precious gift in the midst of it. God. God's self. Theotokos. God bearer. That's the sort of present we are all called to be. Mary. Wrapped in foil with ribbons and bows. Bearing God by her humility and obedience. McGuail wrapped in, with foil and ribbons and bowls, bearing God by his goodness and joy. You, wrapped in foil and bows and ribbons, bearing God with the gifts of faith that you've received in these waters. God has a vision for you to be the best present ever. Bear that present with all the joy and the beauty of the God who has saved you in these waters. Amen. We stand and sing the little town of Bethlehem. Will receive him still, the 
It's a wish if I encourage you to set down all of your stuff and, and just open yourself up to God. So put down your, your bulletins and your hymnals or whatever else you're holding on to. And just release yourself to receive God. Let's breathe in the Holy Spirit and, and breathe out all that keeps us away from God in this frenzied season. Well, God, we give thanks that we have been honored to bear you to the world. Make us the sort of present that brings delight by the gifts that you have given us. Well, God, we celebrate the many gifts of this congregation. Many of those will come to bear in just a few days on Christmas Eve. Bless each of them, Lord, as they serve on December 24th. Worship leaders, song leaders, choir members, altar guild, ushers, acolytes, crucifers, sound and video people, computer people, greeters, all that make your word known. Holy God, we pray for the visitors that might come and worship with us this week ahead. May they find in here the best wrapped gift of all. Your love beckoning to them. Your angels calling them and opening them. May they leave bearing your goodness too. Lord, in that time of manufactured joy with the commercialness of Christmas, we pray for those who find themselves alone, for those who are grieving, for those who have empty seats this year, especially Bev Hefkin, with the loss of our brother in Christ, Mark. We pray for those who are sick or ill, Kimberly, Meg, Susan, Jennifer, Ryan, Sherry, Adam, Karen, Jack, Judy, Gary, Bill, David, Steve, Tanya, Courtney, Fred, Lindy, Dolly, Jerry, Eliza, Kathy, Roberta, Chris, and others named aloud now. Lord, we lift up all these prayers with the confidence of those who have been called, declared righteous, and sent out to share your love. Make us, Lord, all theotokos bearers of God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
Please share God's love, God's peace with one another this morning. invite our choir forward to sing this morning. Our ushers will take an offering uh, as they come through if you have an offering to share. Uh, online, if you'd like to share an offering, you can go to our website and do so there. And uh, if you need an offering, if this is a season of your life where you need more, please let us know and we have gifts to share with you. That's for sure. Let us pray. Please stand. Holy God, receive all these gifts as a sign of our love for you. Give us the wisdom to use them in your world to bear God for all the delight. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to our God and sing with the choirs of angels this hymn of praise to our Lord. Lord, God of power and 
and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Holy God, we come to you again with the humility of Mary on our knees, asking for your presence to be found in this ordinary meal of bread and wine. Trust in the promises that have been made to us as Mary trusted that angel that came to her. Help us live into that trust, Lord, believing what Jesus taught in the night he was betrayed, where he took bread and broke it and gave thanks and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it for all people to drink, saying, This cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this wine, we are proclaiming the very mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Come, O Holy Spirit, come. Transform this meal so that we are transformed by your very presence that lives within us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Change us to be your people. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace, grant us peace, Lamb of If you made it to your pew without a communion kit and we'd like to share communion with us, there's, there's bowls on the, two bowls in the middle of the aisle that you can make your way to and, and grab. Let's release that uh, wafer, pulling off the clear plastic on top. Let's take this as one. The body of Christ given for you. Pull back the foil. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Fed and nourished by our Lord's body and blood, may you be strengthened now to be God's people forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I have just a few announcements before we scatter for the week ahead. It's a big week for our children and youth this week. We had breakfast with Santa on Saturday. Yesterday we had great turnout. We had um, roughly about 100 children that came and about 200 breakfasts that were served. Uh, thanks to our dartball team uh, that uh, 
<clears throat> was our cooks in the kitchen and, uh, and our high school youth that were uh, the volunteers throughout. They did a wonderful job running the crafts in Fritz Hall. Um, we just got wonderful youth here. And, uh, and then all the parents, especially our uh, Messiah Christian School parents who came out in, in volumes and supported that uh, day. So it was good. Good ministry, and uh, and then we just had at 9:30 we had a, 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 a Christmas program with uh, children and youth, uh, led by our family minister Adam and uh, our uh, choir director, our junior choir director Lori Hitzman, and our VIP director Allison Carroll, and, and all all our children and youth. It, it was just a, it was a fun time at 9:30 too. So a good good weekend for us here, um, and we can feel thankful. We are going to keep the offering envelopes in the uh, sanctuary or in the uh, welcome center for another couple weeks. Uh, and then they will go away and then we'll like call you up and leave messages and probably steal your dog to hold it as a <laughs> that sort of thing. So, um, so it's going to get ugly here if you don't pick up those offering envelopes. So I'm just, just lifting it up right now. If you haven't picked one up yet, go, go out there. If, if there's not one there for you, just let me know, and, and we'll, we'll figure that out, too. Um, this service needs some help with ushers. Uh, this service needs some help with ushers. If you would like to usher, uh, Holly is our, is our person to talk to here. So I'm, I'm hoping that a few of you will, will volunteer to usher and, and, uh, and, and help us in that good gift. We have Yar, who's ushering here for the first time today. Uh, right, Yara, or have you done this before? They say, and she's doing a wonderful job, too. And so there you go. Thanks, Yara, for stepping forward. Uh, we are, uh, are, the alder flowers, are, you can order alder flowers. We, uh, we are doing it by Sign Up Genius. When you get that email on Friday with all of the stuff that's going on in the church, you can scroll down and click on that. Uh, the white bulletin board that we passed out, I think the Sign Up Genius, uh, uh, way of getting there is there too. If, if you are just like somebody that's going, I ain't going to touch anything called Sign Up Genius, then you can call Linda on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and tell her when, when you would like to have flowers. Uh, and, and if you don't know, members of the congregation put flowers on our altar to, to make this space beautiful for Sunday worship. It's a good gift. And, uh, and they usually do it on days that are important to them, like anniversaries or birthdays or days that someone passed, or just to the glory of God. And how much do alder flowers cost, Meg? $20. So $20. And then you take them home at the end of this 11 o'clock worship service. So, um, so it, it's a good gift for us, and you get them at home. And, and uh, so and to do that for this year ahead, we start 2022. So Christmas Eve, I hear, is Friday. <laughs> Bad news for you, that's my day off. But we got such great leaders here, we'll be fine. For the rest of you, you'll be here at 1 30, 4 30, 7 30, and 11 is, uh, is the four services we have. We went back to the traditional number. We aren't actually expecting the traditional amount, which could be 1,000 to 1,100 some years. Uh, but we wanted to have as many services to space out people as well as best we could in the midst of this pandemic. So, uh, and all of them, the 130, 730, 11 are all traditional worship services uh, led by our organ and piano, and the 430 is led by the praise team. Uh, but they're all very, very similar to services with, uh, uh, with candles and Silent Night. Uh, you got cards when you came in. I forgot to tell people all this all morning. We're not giving those cards to you necessarily, because most of you have been around the block a few times. We're, we're, we're giving those pretty cards for you to give to your neighbors. So just walk over to your neighbor's house, and if you're too shy to knock on the door, put it in their mailbox. Or, uh, but knock on the door would be best, and, and, and hand it to them and invite them to, invite them to worship on Sunday. You're the only service I remember to tell that to. There you go. Uh, so now you bear the burden of getting rid of all those cards. Uh, and then Sunday, a week from today, we're only having one combined worship service, and that's at 10 in the morning. So Sunday, December 26, we're having one combined worship service. That's at 10 in the morning, um, and I will be here to greet you then. So if you came at 11 o'clock next week, 
you would already have missed the worship service. So, so 10 o'clock next week, one service. January 2nd, the following week, will be a normal 8, 9, 30, and 11. So it's just that one Sunday we're pairing it back uh, just to give some of our people some breaks and, and things like that after the Christmas Eve. Um, check the bulletin over the next uh, weeks about the activities that you normally do at Messiah. A lot of things are, are, are not happening to give volunteers a break, um, except for choirs. They're all meeting this week because they've got a lot of work uh, uh, to give their good gift. Um, but other things like fellowship and education um, are, 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 I think, most of the outreach things that we had already planned are happening except for Messiah Night Pickup. So just, just make sure your event is happening before you come out. Uh, over the next week. We normally uh, shut down the office completely between Christmas and New Year, too. So if you need to get into the building, you'll have to call the pastor or Jude or Richard or council president or somebody like that to, to help you if you need access to the building in that time. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, if you heard, if you saw the emails, uh, we did lose a, a member this week. Mark Hefkin died suddenly. Um, of a catastrophic stroke. Uh, Mark and Bev have been members for about five years, uh, about 74, and, and so Bev begins this journey, um, hopefully supported by our congregation uh, of grief. They're gonna, they, they've they chosen to have a small family-only uh, funeral at uh, uh, Cottoner's Funeral Home here in town that I'll be leading tomorrow afternoon. So keep Bev in your prayers and, and her two daughters. Uh, that they raised. Let's have our blessing before we scatter. Please stand. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen. Additional announcement, and that's if you uh, enjoy watching uh, the the marathon that I run every Sunday, you might enjoy another marathon that's happening today here at this church at three o'clock, and it's my students' uh, fall Christmas recital, and uh, it's only going to be a little over an hour. So those of you that like to keep things short, it's short, uh, but there are plenty of notes to be played, and uh, you can sit back and watch us do some work. <laughs>
that serve the Lord. Amen.